This is the Jocko Underground Podcast, number 43. Echo Charles sitting here with me. We had a false start momentarily All good. a second ago. All good. I read the wrong number. I said the wrong number. Wasn't even close. This is 43. I said what? 32. Imagine where my mind is. Even Imagine where my mind is that I'm thinking 43 and I'm saying 32. I, I, yeah, it's hard for a brother. Yeah. Even the strongest <laughs> have their moments of fatigue. You Maybe you're just a little fatigued. Breaking down. I don't know. We've been, we've been podcast recording today for five hours at this time. Yes, sir. Okay. So you recently mentioned to me the possibility of the Charles family unit Mm -hmm. acquiring possibly a dog. So I figured this is a good opportunity to discuss real quick Mm -hmm. because we got some really good questions. Just understanding theoretically and pragmatically dog ownership. Okay. (laughs) Okay. So I have a dog. Um, I want to make sure that you and everybody kind of knows this. Dogs are work. They are a lot of work. They are not only a lot of work, but they are a lot of responsibility. And as a dad with four kids that are now older, I'm going to go on a limb here (laughs) and say that in some ways, especially a puppy, in some ways a dog is the same kind of responsibility as a kid in some ways. Uh, You know, you have to feed them, you have to walk them, they never grow out of that phase. Like eventually your kid can go to the bathroom, right? (laughs) Yeah. Your dog never learns how to use the toilet, right? That's not happening. So you have to be home, you have to go home. They they, they can't get out if they need to get out. Now you get a dog door. I have a dog door, by the way. Yeah. Digital, electronic, like yeah, like their call. Co- my dog's collar opens the little gate. Oh damn! So if he needs to go to the bathroom, we're good. Huh. Food. If you want to travel, this is probably the biggest adjustment. If you want to travel, you have kids. You take the tr- kid with you, yeah. right? With a dog, that's not necessarily possible. Yeah. Right. You got to get a crate if you're taking it on a plane or in the car. There's certain hotels you can't stay. There's a bunch of issues. You can't just leave it at home. You can't, but you can hire like a house sitter, but then you're hiring a house sitter, right? There's yeah. a lot of things. I'm saying you got to think about that. Yeah. There's a lot of responsibility. There's a lot of work. By the way, you have to train this individual. You, you, you have to train the dog just like you have to train your own children. Mm-hmm. And I know that sounds a little bit twisted to say you're training your children, but you kind of are. You yeah. are. Never mind. Kind of. So before you just run out and buy a dog because they're cute or whatever, sure. think about the level of work, think about the level of responsibility. Now, what are the rewards? Some massive rewards. Number one, security. No better security than a dog. Criminals do not like houses with dogs in them. Mm-hmm. They don't, they're gonna go away. They're gonna go to the next house. Mm-hmm. That's, the, that's the single biggest deterrent for crime, for household crime, for breaking an entry, is a dog. So if you have a dog, even the like, little scrappy dogs, like little small dogs, they're a deterrent. Yeah. Just because they're annoying, right? Yeah. Criminal's like, this is too annoying. I'm yeah. not going in there. <laughs> if you have a dog like my dog. Yeah, that's a deterrent. Sure. You're deterred. <laughs> like, the whole neighborhood's <laughs> kind of deterred. <laughs> so I think Mike Ritlin Mike, Mike called my dog a man eater. <laughs> I said, that's appropriate. That makes sense to me. Uh, and by the way, if you're getting in the dog game, check out Mike Ritlin's information. Read his book. Uh, he's got a bunch of great stuff on dogs. I'm just giving you my sort of semi amateur. I'm not. A, I'm obviously not a professional dog trainer like Mike, mm-hmm. but I'm a professional dog owner because sure. I legitimately own a dog. Oh, yeah. So you have the security aspect, which is awesome. You have yeah. the fun aspect because dogs are fun. Like they're just fun. Mm-hmm. They're like a little weird person yeah. that doesn't talk a lot. <laughs> But they give you looks, they know what's up. Like with my dog, if I just like turn my head quick, my dog goes in alert mode. For real? Yeah, (laughs) and I test him with it and I reward him. So, you know, I'll be sitting sitting down, you know, working on something and all of a sudden I'll just perk up and look and he goes into alert mode. (laughs) He goes, his ears go up, he's ready to go. And that's kind of fun and plus they're good to hang out with a dog. They're, They're super cool to you. 
They're nice. They they will go the run with you. They'll work out, not necessarily do the workout, but they'll be in there chilling with you, cruising, yeah. like participating in their own special way. Yeah, <laughs> accompanying you to the workout for sure. Uh, there's so something that's important about all these things is that discipline equals freedom. So if you have a dog that you train, then you're set. Then it's awesome. If you have a dog that you don't train and it's just a wild animal on a leash, that sucks. My dog don't even need a leash. I just go for runs with him, he stays with me. If he sees something or he's doing something I don't want him to do, I can tell him stop, he'll stop. Like I'm talking cats, you know what I mean? He will. He listens to me. Mm-hmm. He doesn't, for instance, there's a security perimeter at my house that he knows that he patrols and he stays within the perimeter. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's awesome. So. I was gonna not say that because I didn't want a criminal to think that they could stay outside the security perimeter and be okay, but it's fine. You can know that. If you cross the perimeter, you're in trouble. My dog's gonna get you. If you stay outside, okay, you can stay out there. Mm. Unless I release him, then you're screwed. Um, So discipline with a dog actually equals freedom, which is awesome, but you have to put the time and effort into a dog before you get one. Don't run out and buy it just because it's cute. They are a pain especially when they're puppies and then even when they get older you gotta you gotta deal with them you're responsible for them so keep that in mind what kind of dog are you considering getting we are getting oh what's called and i never heard of this dog even though i heard i've seen them before mm-hmm. it's called a basenji okay you know what that is no yeah me neither but if you see me be like huh maybe i seen that okay so this is what it is it's the old you see the what do you call them the hieroglyphs or the the old egyptian writing yeah, on the wall yeah, yeah, you know yeah. the dog that looks pointy? like a fox it's yeah pointy, right you know? yeah it's that so when I see I, I seen pictures, I was like, sure, that's cute, that's nice, or whatever, you know. Mm-hmm. They're they're perfect for Basenji. Basenji, okay. yeah. So, um, <clears throat> what do you name it? I was gonna kind of run those by you too. Probably Zeta, probably. Okay. Um, it's mainly for my daughter. Mainly, mm-hmm. she was the main advocate for this move. I was against it. Mm-hmm. I'm for it now because we went and met them and all the, all the stuff. So. We went to, I guess the the dad, the dog's dad mm-hmm. is like a show dog, like who won the last like two years of the dog show that they have here. Apparently, I don't know. I'm just learning all this too. So they're really good, like you know the lineage or whatever is like good. But what I really liked about it is like they're not super cumbersome. You know, they're really they're nice. Agile. They're, yeah, they're they super friendly. How big do too. they get? Medium, like I don't know, thirty pounds, forty pounds. It was a, <clears throat> I'm trying to think, 16 and a half inches, I think they said. Okay. So it's like, it's medium, medium. Yeah. So it's not like, medium it was, small. it was, like your yeah, shirt, medium, small. Bro. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> extra medium. It, extra medium. For real, like to see the full grown one, I was like, dang, that's yeah. a good looking dog, but he seems a bit small. And he really just reminded me of a, like a fox dog ish. Yeah. Even the color is like almost like a red, but anyway, really nice, super friendly. Like they don't, I think they're like quasi hypoallergenic or whatever, which was kind of the criteria that my daughter kind of wanted or whatever. Do they shed? They shed like once a year or something for like seasonal or so, or once or twice or something like that. Um, Anyway. Yeah. Called Basenji. Super nice. I'm down for it. you say this is happening? This is happening. How old is the dog going to be when you get it? Uh, I don't know. Three months maybe. Okay. Jack. All right, well, I could be wrong about that. A little puppy. Just know there will be added responsibility, which, look, I know I'm not trying to be mean or whatever. I'm not trying yeah. to take a dig at you. No, no, no. You but are, but cool. I know the added responsibility is not something you're usually <laughs> looking for. I, I don't pursue those. <laughs> yes, exactly right. Uh, well, the good news is, and the, the reality, I, I grew up with, with dogs mm-hmm. more than one. Like, I've had, we had one when we were super small where my dad would take care of My mom and dad would take care But at, even as just young kids all the way up into adulthood we had two dogs two dalmatian dogs too oh, which are freaking hyper and whatever and i trained them oh i was kind of a tyrant but out. here's the thing i was super disciplined and i realized when you said discipline equals freedom bro that's so true because so true. the more disciplined you are like you can actually be pretty like hardcore with a dog as long as they're it's super predictable bro, yeah. they'll just totally listen to yeah. you and you're they're right just down for the cause oh yeah fully they're just like yeah yeah that, that's how um and there were we let them inside and, you know, they would shed a lot, which kind of sucked. White hair everywhere. But they would listen, though. Like, I taught them little tricks and stuff. And apparently, they're super Dalmatians anyway. 
are um what do you call it? they have high energy or whatever yeah. so you might not be able to train them as good bro they I potty train it like they would never use a bathroom in the house ever they'd always go to the door and be scratching the door howling and stuff trying to get out to use the bathroom or whatever need that dog door yeah this was back in on Kauai maybe 1992 mm. I don't know either way I trained them by myself and so I know I know what it's like to have a dog yeah but the traveling thing is like that's the part where we're like mm, we got to set up some criteria for where they can go or whatever while we travel. Yeah. So that part's probably the biggest bummer in my opinion. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, I met the dog and all that. So I'm like, all right, I dig it. I see it now. Okay. Because you're right, and it'll get. You know when you have kids or whatever, and my kids are five and eight. Mm -hmm. That's gonna get them out of the house even more. You know, like yeah. riding around with a dog and doing all that stuff, they which like, I kind of want. They're going to be walking that dog and whatnot. Yep. We'll and they can learn there. some responsibility. Right so I'm down for that for sure. Um, all right. Should we get some questions? Yep. Might as well. All right. First question. Jocko. I'm a That is a little excerpt of what we are doing on the Jocko Underground podcast. So if you want to continue to listen, go to jockounderground.com and subscribe. And we're doing this to mitigate our reliance on external platforms so we are not subject to their control. And we're doing it so we can give you more control, more interaction, more direct connections, better communications with us strengthen this legion of troopers that are in the game with us so thank you it's jockounderground.com it costs eight dollars and 18 cents a month and if you can't afford to support us we can still support you just email assistance at jockounderground.com and we'll get you taken care of until then we will see you mobilized underground